everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Missing Cool Kids right now at their mom's and the Lame Bar Dad Solo. We are back here tonight with another fan uh, request, a uh, follower, uh, uh, Beat Conductor has been waiting nice and patiently here for Winter Sun, and I'm going to be doing Sons of Winter and Stars. 13 minutes and 31 seconds generally translates to a 45 minute video for me. We are not going to do that today, are we? No, no, no. I have got a book. I've got some notes to take down. So I am not going to fall sucker to the pause button. I'm hearing this is a song we do not want to fall sucker to the pause button. I've got my trusty pen here. What does it say here again? Fuck off, I'm busy, you cunt. Oh. Yep, that would be one of my good friends who sent me that uh, from Australia. So one of my favorite words. And we've got pen, paper, and we are going to pop this up because Winter Sun Yari was kind enough to post this up on his page for us to be able to try and enjoy here for the evening. So let's get ready and go boom, boom, boom. Be conductor, let's see what you got me watching. This is actually probably a really good time to stop uh, for one of our few limited so stops I'm going to try to do here. Really like the intro to this. Very fast, very power uh, heavy. If that's not a 160 to 180 easily uh, beat per minute, I'm not even going to sit there and try to count that out. I'm not a drummer. That is way past my technical skill. I'm not counting that out, but that's not a 180 or close to 160 and higher, I'm a monkey's freaking uncle. So I'm a monkey's uncle. I'm not even going to try to Google that because I don't even want to try to count that out. I'm not going to lie. Not even going to try. Second, I'm not a big fan of Scream. I'm not going to lie. Not a big fan of Scream. And I probably would have not liked the vocal part here if not for the choir coming in first and catching me. And then the scream accompanying uh, the um, choir uh, vocal. 
It actually didn't bother me one bit uh, with hearing the scream come in. I would normally go, oh god, I'm in for a scream band, I'm screwed. And this is not going to be a, the most pleasing react for you guys watching because I'm not going to be happy. Not going to be that case right now. <clears throat> so you can understand them. One of my big problems with scream is I cannot understand 95% of those guys screaming and I'm very lyric based. If I can't hear the lyrics and you're screaming, I don't really give a rat's ass what you're doing. So. Honestly, I don't. Just the way I am. Really like when they come in with that rise and how they do it. It really comes out more vocal and dominant. It's like that's the hook when they do it. So, because even after we get past that part, I still want to scream out rise. So, and I'm going to quickly go run and grab my freaking lighter. All right, guys, let's go. Boom, boom, boom. Can I go back 10 seconds? I don't think so. Oops. Nice counting. Back to the power drumming. Nice double kick. Oh, nice bill. So he likes to give you a little bit of mini pills and then a really nice uh, bill going around the kit. I've noticed a pattern there. I will say, I wish the bass was a little louder coming out in the mix. I think I'd really accomplish uh, a couple of the drums uh, would be more vocal. I'm going to give a quick stop here so I don't forget what my notes are. Um, when we came back in after the pause, and let's give this 10 seconds back before I forget here again. So instead of uh, them bringing back a, uh, the choir uh, vocals, and then uh, the lead vocals comes back in uh, with uh, scream uh, again, screaming uh, vocals. This time they bring in a second vocalist. He's singing uh, in a... Um, uh, har um, a uh, more harmonic uh, type uh, mel or melodic, there's the word I'm looking for. More of that melodic, you know, he does that, that scream, he's trying to provide the melody uh, background that the choir had previous. And then you bring in the lead singer again, or whoever's doing leads on this um, track anyways, and he comes back in with the uh, scream again. Very nice, switching it up that way. I like that, switched it up. 
So I thought maybe we're going to actually get a non-scream uh, few verses here of uh, lyrics, but no, they brought us back in just a different way that they presented it this time. Then, for a moment, in the backing, uh, the singer uh, who was singing backs up. Instead of backing up uh, the harmony uh, and the melody with uh, the regular voice he had, he comes in screaming in key in a bit deeper voice. I really like that. That was a nice layer effect. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. The singer, though, reminds me, and I'm not sure if it's Behemoth that I'm catching here, uh, faint traces of, so, or not, but uh, it kind of reminds me of a Mayhem Behemoth uh, vocal uh, performance sound in the uh, guy who's doing the main uh, singing. But that's just me. Uh, correct me if you guys think I'm wrong, but that's just me. Okay, we went back 10 seconds. Boom, boom, boom. We talk about the musicians too much just because they don't seem to be the focal point. It seems to be the singer the drums vocal in this. The symphony is there to add you uh, the background carry it with the drums but really the guitar is there just more for sound effect uh, than it is uh, over being vocal. I like the raspiness of his voice. Nice roll again, nice fill. Right back at God, he must have good arms and legs, man. This drummer. Nice string arrangement there. Nice bringing those strings a little vocal. Vocal. Oh, change up the measures, that uh, pace. Poor drummer needs a beat or a break by now. I swear he does. I'm wondering now and even then, he's not taking much of a break. Got a polyrhythmic. Okay, I'm going to stop here. I didn't take any notes down. We're changing a uh, pace uh, in the measure and key here right now. So the key signature is uh, starting to change up. Uh, we're getting a different uh, pace and feel of the song. And yes, I'm not looking at it. I'm going to roll a joint at the same time and zip it up after I'm done talking. If you're listening to the background and you're paying attention to the drums, I know I'm not talking about the guitar and bass uh, right now and not too much on the uh, symphonic aspect of it. Because for me right now, this is very drum and vocal driven for this performance. I am getting a lot, or at least whoever mixed this is bringing the drums out predominantly in here. So my my view listening to this is I'm being told the drums are what's the vocal of this point. That's what I'm paying attention to. I'm hearing some really nice short fills and I'm hearing some really nice long fills going uh, along the kit and using up the kit. Very nicely done. As they're bringing the measure down here, and we're slowing the down the tempo, all the musicians are slowing down the tempo, but you're getting a polyrhythmic uh, change here within the drummer. He Listen to him. He's giving you some of a uh, polyrhythmic here, and he's still going hard, and he's just really lightened up the play, and he's not stopped going fast. He's just very lightened it up. Listen. He's still going quick. He's just going soft. I'm wondering now where you like the Celtic feel of this. Traditional. Not uh, Celtic traditional feel. Nice change of uh, tempo measure. It's 
You know, they brought the drums less vocal. And now you're hearing uh, that folk uh, trying to pick up what instrument is being played. It sounds like a centimer or something like that. Acoustic and something else. I'm not picking it up. Is that a mandolin I'm hearing? I think that's a mandolin. Yes, it wasn't a detour. I, I'm positive that was a uh, freaking mandolin. I'm going to stop here really quick. I'm not going to bother with notes. I, I think uh, this might be the last stop to second last. Do you guys know if the singer is screaming actually in key or are they correcting anything that like he's losing sharp or flat with a um, auto pitch, uh, you know, uh, correction? Because I won't lie. I'm interested in going. I saw that the, there's a live performance of this. I'm very interested to go back and... Uh, listen to that one because i've heard so many screamers sound half decent and screaming in key what i thought was in key i do not come from the days of mixing with pro tools and all those uh you know things and auto pitch and auto tune so i come from either you were able to sing or you couldn't sing and you couldn't hide it too much so and to me when I come across screamer, screamers, I have actually liked on uh, the audio, and I see a transition live. I see a live performance. They cannot sustain screaming and key. They cannot keep it even close. And to me, that tells me that's one of those auto pitch programs. So this guy here is keeping his uh, pitch and key. So is this uh, if you guys know is, is this a uh, uh, post production or is this guy actually able to scream that well and key and keep it going? Because I only know about. That I know of, that I know of, uh, that can scream in key and keeping it in key is probably about six guys. So I don't know if I went back, but it was well worth going back even further. And let's try to close this one off. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> yeah, because screaming out of key is one of my biggest problems. Or not right on key. This just screams to me this is a very drum driven, uh, meant to be drum driven uh, song. It's got, it's got all the vocal production on it. Uh, 
Nice, nice. Okay, I'm going to make this my last stop. We're almost at the end anyway, so perfect time. Okay, the more and more I'm getting into this, the more and more I've got the concept of this song here too. So this, or at least correct me if I'm wrong, this is my interpretation of the feel of this song so far and gain limited breaks so I'm able to get more into the feel of this as I'm going along. Yes, I'm talking, but I'm talking because I'm taking stuff and confirming what I think. So... This is a very Sega style uh, presentation, as in this would be a, a perfect uh, Norse or, you know, type Viking, you know, um, if I was on stage, this is why I could see visually being presented. Hence, you're getting a very, very, very drum driven uh, song and you're getting the uh, symphony orchestra in the back accompanying them as the driving force of this song along with the vocalist. The bass player and the guitar players are there just to uh, add the extra thickness to the song and give it some more meat to it. Simply that. I may be wrong, but the way this is being produced and being mixed, I'm getting first and foremost drums. So the next thing that pops out of me is the vocal performance when the vocal's coming in and then the uh, symphony orchestra that's accompanying them. So I'm getting light guitar. I'm getting light bass in the mix uh, compared to what I would be normally used to or expecting, won't lie. So, and I get what they're doing. It's not an awk. I get what the concept is here, I think. If I'm wrong, correct me, but if we're going to be given a Sega-style feel to this, guitar is not going to be really your driving point. You get some really good quick, fast riffs uh, for a uh, few measures before they stop again, and that's during the uh, power beats on the uh, uh, drums. And for my interpretation of this, those I'll, I'll get to this quick, is that is just to give the more of that feeling, power feeling to the drums itself to add to that performance. So if I'm wrong, you guys correct me, but this is my analysis so far from what I'm hearing on a musical standpoint and a production mixing standpoint. All right, let's finish this up, boys. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> If anyone uh, remembers, and I forget, remember, remind me to talk about that light uh, speaking in the background that they panned in. That's the only reason I stopped. Nice closing on that. What did they use? Okay, I'm going back. Let's see if I can catch this. Was that a biking trick on the bass drum or a top or something? That, that sounds like it was a biking trick on the bass.
Oh, and nice is Danny No leading you out. Nice. And continuing. Oh, nice. Nice outro. Very nice outro. Very, very nice outro. So perfect to the ending. Okay, before I forget, the whole reason I stopped uh, the first time was I also liked out of the blue, you start getting a chant uh, speaking in the uh, right channel and coming over lightly, faintly on the uh, left in behind everything as a or ambiotic uh, layering in. I really love that. That gave actually a really nice feel to what they were bringing on here. Really, really enjoyed that. Really like the ambiotic outro. Think you're almost at the outro, and then they drop the decimal as even lower as they sustain the last two notes going. Ah, oh, nicely done outro. I'm not going to spend too much time talking on this. I'm not going to talk too much guitar or bass because that was not what this performance was about. They were giving you some meaty uh, power chords. They were giving you some meaty, uh, I think I heard on top of uh, that, uh, some um, a bar or two uh, a chord. I couldn't pick it up. I wasn't really paying attention to tell you the truth because to me, this performance was more pay attention to what their drummer was doing and how the orchestra slash symphony was a comp or accompanying uh, that vocalness to it. It was a very nice uh, company to vocaling you on there and the vocal performance matching up to what the drums were doing. So for me, what I got out of this song, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, and I might be off the mark, but if I was mixing this and this was my job, what I would be feeling, I'm told, if this I had to explain this, was I was told to bring the drums and the vocals, the predominant two vocal points, make the symphony the second layering of my sound, and that's going to be my uh, melody uh, and my, um, uh, uh, my, my, what's the word I'm looking for? Ah. Uh, uh, Complimenting is not the word I'm looking for, but complimenting what we're hearing from the vocal and the drummer, you know, to, as a backup. And literally, the guitar and the bass are there just to add an extra layer to it. If you're not a bass player and you're not familiar with picking up bass, the bass is really low in the mix. So I'm not going to complain about the guitar and the bass. If I'm right, the, the whole concept was they weren't supposed to be. So that's perfectly fine. All right. I'm going to shut up. I said what I had to say at the beginning. I like this song. I'm more than interested to give these guys a, another uh, two, three, four goes to see if I'm going to like it as much as I am here. I'm not a big fan of Scream, so I won't lie. If the next one is more Scream and no vocal, uh, nice uh, vocal singing like I heard on top, it's just Scream. I'm going to be looking to see if he's screaming in key the whole performance or if he needs a second singer to uh, sustain the other vocal performance because I think both together really gave my impression of a song with Scream in it, a, a thumbs up there that they did it start with the choir and then uh, with how they brought in the other singer just uh, singing regularly and not with the Scream. I thought that was very well done and for someone who hates most Scream singers and bands with Scream in it, I actually like this so I'm more than willing to give this another shot. Not this song, this band another shot and see if I can get a even better impression and impersonation, um, imp not impersonation, impression and opinion on them because it's not a negative opinion. D didn't blow me out of the water. I won't lie, didn't blow me out of the water. So it's what I was expecting out of it. You know, it wasn't anything bad. It wasn't anything great or spectacular. I'm sorry. It wasn't anything great or spectacular. I've heard better. I've heard much worse. This would make it onto my USB stick. So for me to say it made it, it'll make it onto my USB stick, means it's a damn good song. Like, it's good enough that if I'm willing to say, yeah, let's get another other go. I liked what I heard. Whoa, don't start over again. And I'm going to give this a thumbs up for now. We will see if we subscribe later on. But for now on, or for right now, I'm giving these a thumbs up and I liked it enough to give it a thumbs up. So, <clears throat> We are asking you, if you like this video, please make sure you give us a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. We will if we like some more songs from here, or I will. So I will subscribe eventually if I like more. So if you notice up here, I'm interested in going and checking out this live performance uh, next. So probably won't be tonight or react to it. I don't know. If you guys want me to react to the live performance and tell you my difference between the studio and the live, sure, why not? But it'll be based all off the live performance. But... So yes, I'm going to be checking out more by uh, Winter Sun. 
So this was Sons of Winter, uh, uh, Sons of Winter and Stars. So I enjoyed it, quite enjoyed it. So I won't lie, quite enjoyed it. Did it blow me out of the water? No. So were there other songs that you know I think might blow me out of the water on the list? Possibly. So let's see if the next one blows me out of the water, or if this is just going to be a band that I say, yeah, got really good talent, I could dig listening to. And when I wanted something a bit different, this would actually be on my list of go-tos uh, so far. So far. I'm not going to say positive. So, first song. So, we'll see. So, so far, this is a good go-to song if I want to change it up and get something a little refreshing. And that's not the same out there because it was refreshing and not the same. So, alright. Done with my rant. Or my comment. Just want to let you guys know that, yes, I do have some, uh, you know, uh, negative if you want to call it criticism of it but all in all i thought it was actually a pretty good song and i can't wait to check out more uh by this group or project i'm not sure if it's group or project anyhow this is the missing cool kids uh, for the rest of the week the lame dad saying peace out